Hey everyone, welcome to Chuck's Guitar Geekery. Today is episode two of what I'm calling Chuck's Guitar Vloggery. And just like every self-righteous old curmudgeon, I'm gonna just look into my camera phone and start rambling. Because so much positivity in the world happens when approaching middle-aged guys like myself start doing this. I guess it would be more authentic if I was sitting in my car rambling and yelling, but I'm in my basement. For the topic today, I'm going to talk about when and why you should upgrade your guitars. I'm pretty much obsessed with cheapo guitars and trying to get as many cheapo guitars in my possession as possible. It's borderline unhealthy at this point, I think. I've actually done pretty good this year. Maybe it's because I've been stuck in the house and haven't been able to venture off to pawn shops as often as I used to. But I have gone through periods where I would just get a guitar just to do a bunch of upgrades to and see how wacky I can make it. So now there's really only two circumstances where I will feel the need to mod or upgrade a guitar. And that's either something about it makes it unusable at a gig, or I just want to do something weird with it. Because my general rule is I try not to have two guitars that are exactly the same. So when it comes to the first scenario where there's just something wrong with the guitar and I don't feel like I could play a gig with it, generally tuning stability is the issue there. So I used to think immediately if there was tuning issues, it was the tuners. Not necessarily. The nut goes a lot further with tuning stability than the tuners. And quite frankly, it's not even an issue of replacing the nut most of the time, it's just lubricating it. So you can just take any pencil, get some graphite in the slots, make sure your strings are good and stretched out, and nine times out of ten that will actually fix a lot of the tuning stability. If you do that and it still won't stay in tune, then maybe start looking at the tuners. And it's pretty much if when you're tuning it, if it starts jumping around a lot, like it won't change pitch for like a quarter tune, then it jumps, and you've ruled out it's the nut holding it up, then you go to the tuners. If the guitar is staying in tune and not breaking strings, then I don't see any need to replace tuners or bridge or saddles. So quite frankly, if a guitar will stay in tune, I will play any gig with it. Outside of tuning stability, another reason a guitar might not be suitable for gigging are the pickups. Now those of you who've been around my channel a while know my saga with this Firefly guitar, but the pickups that came stock in it, which were not these, were microphonic, meaning any sort of volume, I would just get feedback like crazy. Even, I mean, this is a semi-hollow, they get a little more feedback, but with microphonic pickups it was just uncontrollable. But I didn't swap out the pots, which, these are cheap pots, they're the little micro ones, a lot of people have issues with those, but the taper is good enough. For guitar I spent this little on, it was fine. Sure, there's better, but I don't think I would really notice a difference. I don't think most of you would notice a difference. So outside of tuning stability and microphonic pickups, everything else is really just nice to have on a guitar. Like, it's not needed for me to go play a gig with it. Because I probably could have found cheaper. I mean, these were only $27 for the pair, but they were Al Nico magnets. They're not high-end pickups by any stretch of the imagination. So getting into nice-to-haves and kind of just your preferences, really. Especially with cheap guitars like this, they pretty much always come with ceramic magnets. And to me, ceramic magnets are just more brittle sounding, like it's a very harsh high-end. Most of the time, I feel the need to upgrade them. Now there's some higher-end ceramic magnets. To me, the Alnicos just always sound smoother, even when you get the bottom of the barrel Alnico here. But that's not always the case. This guitar here, the parts caster I put together, but it's the Squire 51 body. And quite frankly, this is a very bright and hot stock uh, bridge pickup in here that came with it. I think it goes with this guitar, so... And it also gives me a really hot, bright bridge pickup that I don't have in any of my other guitars, so... I did replace the neck pickup on here, but I'm not too happy with it, so this will probably get replaced at some point. 
don't buy a guitar automatically assuming you're going to be upgrading it, you know, spend some time with it, play with it a little bit, and see if something's actually bugging you about it before you just start ordering parts and getting the soldering iron hot. I'm going to switch back to talking about tuning stability again real quick. I forgot about this guitar. I don't know if you've seen my video on this Firefly guitar, but this was the first run they did, and this wraparound tailpiece, and they put the posts for the, two, the wraparound tailpiece about half an inch too far to the neck side. So with a typical wraparound tailpiece, there was just absolutely zero chance of any intonation. So I did replace this one, but that's the only thing I replaced on this guitar. And you know, I paid a hundred bucks for this guitar and otherwise I like it. You know, I had to do some work. I had to file down the slots in the nut a bit. I had to level some frets, but as far as actual upgrades and replacements, I just replaced what I had to to get the guitar playable, and I like it now. So now I'm going to get into the second category of modification and upgrade, and that's pretty much just to make the guitar different. I don't need 10 different strats, you know, with single, single, single. I mean, granted, there's different types of pickups. There's the vintage, there's hot. See, this PV here, which I picked up back when you could still get these for like 100 bucks, I turned around and put $200 worth of pickups in it, but, you know, you have one strat that's HSH, I might do another one that's HHH, but you know this one's got Seymour Duncans in it. And also I have a 50s wiring mod in this, so as I roll the volume down it still keeps all the high-end clarity. I bought this whole pick guard loaded, just put it in here, and otherwise this guitar is stock. Except for the nut. I always forget about the nut. Because I actually have quite a few PV Predators, so I try to make each configuration a little different. And speaking of trying to get different, there's also this one. Where I got the tube lipstick pickups in it. And I bought this off eBay, and the person before me used a Sharpie or something and squiggled all these lines on the front of it, but I thought it was kind of cool, so I kept it. Why not? But these pickups actually came out of a Squire guitar that kind of had a limited run, I think like 10 years ago, called the Surfcaster, that had these pickups in it. And it came with the Perloid pickguard already. I threw some chrome knobs, and it's kind of a... I like it. It's a unique sounding guitar. So to me, it was worth the upgrade to be able to get weird pickups in here and get a completely different sound. I've also been through quite a period of being obsessed with Telecasters, but do I really need 20 of the same Telecaster? So I kind of, each Telecaster aimed to be a little different, so this is the first one I put together, but it's got a humbucker and a single coil. This is an Esquire I made out of a Telecaster, cheapo Parscaster, and just had the single pickup. This one also has the Eldred mod. In the third position it gets a cool, like, Cocteau type tone. Yeah, it's always fun just to get different pickup combinations. Or like this Epiphone Les Paul I have here, uh, it's actually, it's a bolt-on neck. It's a 1997 Korean-made one, but the pickups that came stock in it were just kind of muddy and woofy sounding, if that's a correct term. So this was the first guitar I actually did the whole uh, guitar fetish quick plug system in, and mainly because I wanted coil tapping. But otherwise, the tuners, everything else on this is stock. But the utility of this now is, these are pretty good sounding, you know, they're on Nico 2, they're kind of vintage output humbuckers. Pretty well rounded sounding now, and with the coil tapping, especially for doing guitar demos on the channel here, it really lets me just have one guitar the whole time to be able to demonstrate both a humbucker and a single coil sound when I'm doing a pedal or an amp or something. Both for getting the pickups to sound less muddy, but also the utility of having the coil tapping. Another cool upgrade I did. Some modifications are just to get weird for the sake of getting weird. It started life as some sort of weird Japanese made Les Paul knockoff, but I had a bolt on neck, so the neck that was on it was warped and I just could not get the intonation right on it. Half the frets were dead. It wasn't worth it, so I've got this guitar fetish flying V neck on it just to make it look different, make it stand out. Then I also put guitar fetish pickups and also wiring harness, but I didn't get the coil tapping on this, so. Kind of wish I did at this point, but I didn't. It's a Retrotron, which I think, you know, is still essentially a humbucker. I don't think they quite nail the actual Filtertron sound. That's a whole different pickup assembly, but... I put the tube lipstick humbucker in the neck here, but... I don't know, the output difference between these two is just way different, so... I think I am going to try a different humbucker. It's pretty far down on my list of projects to do at this point. Yeah, modify just to get weird with it. But last, there's also times when you shouldn't mod. Like this Daisy Rock guitar I picked up for 100 bucks at a pawn shop. Nothing wrong with it. It stays in tune. I like the way the pickups sound. I'm gonna leave this one be. 
pretty much the moral of the story is, yeah, modding's fun, customizing your guitar is fun. If something ain't broke, don't fix it. One of the things that drives me crazy is when people are trying to sell a modified guitar. They think the modifications, you know, they think, well, this is a $300 guitar, I put $200 worth of the parts in it, so I should be able to get $500 for this guitar. No, you're not. You're gonna go crazy modifying and upgrading a guitar that you think you might sell in the future. Definitely hold on to the parts you take out of it, and hopefully you can put them back in. Or at least don't try to do any modifications that can't be reversed, especially if you're going to be spending a lot of money on it, because you're never going to get your money back. You're better off putting the stock parts back in the guitar and then selling the premium upgraded parts separately. I know it's definitely frustrating for people who do that. You know, I see it all the time in all the Facebook groups and all the forums where, you know, they know what they have. Put all DiMarzio and Seymour Duncan in my Squire guitar, why can't I get $500 for it? And I don't really know why it doesn't add to the value. I mean, as a buyer, if I have the option between a stock guitar and one that's been modified with good parts, especially if they're near the same price, as a buyer, it's definitely advantageous for me to find the modified guitars. I don't know. We're a weird bunch. Anyways, I think I've rambled long enough, if anyone's still watching at this point, or if anyone clicks on this damn video in the first place. But to recap, there's really only two scenarios where I will go to modify a guitar. And that's if something has to be done to it to make it playable and gigable, or if I just want to make it completely different or get a new functionality out of it that's very utilitarian. Hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. If there's any other subjects you want to hear me ramble on in a monotone voice for however many minutes, leave it in the comments below. Hope everyone's doing okay out there. It's been a crazy year. A lot of stuff happening, so uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Until next time, cheers.